Hey there. Do animals talk in this dimension? Because I don't want to freak them out. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse emphasizes how important being a hero is to Miles Morales, but is this just a setup for a tragic, incomprehensible loss and in beyond the Spider-Verse? Let's discuss. I can't sit there and just let Spider-Man die without doing anything about it. I'm not doing that again. The first film, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, ended with the message that anyone can wear the mask. That anyone, no matter their background, can step up and be a hero. Probably not you specifically. I... I think it's a metaphor. Miles Morales may not have had the skills, experience, or resources as all his other spider friends from different parts of the multiverse. Can you rewire a mainframe while being shot at? Can I? What? Don't Surprise me. attack! But he had a good heart and a determination to never give up. He didn't know what he was doing for most of the movie, but at the end, he stepped up and embraced his heroic instincts, and that was enough to zap Kingpin into oblivion and save the day. Well, mostly save the day. As we know now, there is still a big problem with the multiverse, but I I assume Miles will eventually save the day. Across the Spider-Verse picked up that general anyone can be a hero sentiment and challenged it a bit more, asking how one wears the mask and what happens when someone is denied the chance to do good for seemingly arbitrary reasons. We see Across the Spider-Verse prove how much Miles has grown as a hero and how determined he is to protect his loved ones from disaster, even when the fate of the multiverse is in question. Now, we know how much being Spider-Man means to Miles, but could that be setting the stage for Miles to face the scary question of what happens if he's not Spider-Man anymore? The sequel takes place 16 months after the first movie, and he's Brooklyn's favorite web-slinger. Well, sort of. He had to issue a few apology videos, but he's trying his best, but he feels alone. Undercutting the classic trope of the guy in the chair, his high school roommate doesn't want any part of that life, and his secret identity has driven a wedge between him and his parents. All of his spider friends are literally worlds away. In that loneliness, Miles becomes so committed to his alter ego that his personal life falls by the wayside, and he almost seems to resent keeping his unmasked obligations. Overall, he really leans into the Spider-Man identity, and it's almost like he feels like he needs to be Spider-Man to be special, which of course means it's heartbreaking when Miguel later informs Miles that he was never meant to be Spider-Man in the first place, as the spider that bit him came from a different universe. Now we're in a situation where the Spider Society is trying to stop him from being a hero, which just stings, right? It sets up the idea that losing his powers is, whether he knows it or not, the worst thing that could happen to Miles, and that might be a challenge he'll have to face sometime before his story is over. In the final moments of Across the Spider-Verse, Miles travels to Earth-42, a world without Spider-Man. We know there's no Spider-Man because the spider that bit Miles comes from this universe. We find out that Miles' dad has bit the bullet and his uncle is still alive. But instead of Aaron Davis being the prowler here, we see that it's Miles who has donned the mantle, presumably turning to a life of crime after his father passed away. And I'll just say, as much as I loved this setup, it's kind of funny to me knowing that this young teenager in this universe is such a hardened big bad. For those of us like 30 and above, can you imagine a 15 year old saying things like, I'm the prowler? I mean, the moment in the movie worked though. This evil Miles is probably really going to resent our Miles for his lucky breaks and what he's able to achieve with the powers from a radioactive spider that allegedly were never meant for him. And now our Miles could see what life would be like if he never got his powers. And it's heavily suggested that Miles in our universe would have turned evil if he wasn't bit by the spider. When he meets Chris Pine's Spider-Man and they link up using Spidey Sense, Miles' original colors are Prowler colors before turning to Spider-Man colors, which I think altered his destiny and is just a fun realization knowing what we know now. So now we're left with an interesting cliffhanger, with Miles in trouble and his spider friends joining forces to save him. But given the arc we've seen over these two movies, wouldn't the final movie in this arc center around Miles deciding to stay Spider-Man or not? He's desperately trying to save the multiverse and save everyone he loves at the same time. So what if the only way to save everyone and everything is by giving up his spider power somehow and fixing the original anomaly that was created when he was first bit by a different universe spider? That would be the ultimate heroic act, as it means Miles has to give up everything he holds dear, but he realizes that he can be special without being Spider-Man. These movies tend to start with each Spider-Man character saying how they're the one and only Spider-Man, so I think it would be interesting to see what happens if Miles has to give that up to save the day.
What do you think? Feasible? Not feasible? Bittersweet? Happy ending? How do you want this trilogy to wrap up, and what would be best for Miles' story arc? Is my option feasible? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching CBR. See you next time.